Okay, so today's assignment, we're going to be talking about creating a list in Excel. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. I'm going to show you one way, super easy and super quick. So I'm going to select everything, and you don't have to do this in your sheet. I'm going to select everything in um, part of RIF4. Sorry, I'm going to select from A4 all the way to H4. And I'm going to go to Filter. So, for example, if I wanted to know all the employees that were hired in 2004, I could just click OK. And then it creates a list for me of all the employees that were hired in the year 2004. So, let's go to Clear Filter. Um, I'll show you some other ones here shortly in just a little bit. But the list function is used, um, this one is used to just filter. It's going to create a list by filtering things. But I'm also going to show you how to create a validated list. Um, so it helps you filter things out, makes it easier to read through things. You maybe can just find exactly what you're looking for. Um, but a validated list is, and I know you've all seen them, we used it yesterday, you just didn't know that's what it was. It was in um, the calorie spreadsheet, you know, where you could only choose from the options that were in the drop down. So that's a validated list, meaning that information's already been verified, and you can only choose from that list. It prevents typos, and it controls the information. <coughs> Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in this spreadsheet, and I do hope you have this up, under employee ID, we're going to start by giving each employee an ID. 001, 002, 003, 004, oops, 005. Now, I'm hoping this is enough so that the sheet knows the uh, pattern. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to the bottom right corner. I'm going to drag it. And see how it's automatically filling right here? And I'm going to go all the way down to Allen Tate. So that's a cool little trick. It'll save you some time. All right, so the days employed. We're going to change this date over here. I'm going to modify it 6 to 2009. And you'll see in just a few minutes why I changed that. So dates employed. We're going to do this as a um, days 360 function. So we're going to click FX, days 360, OK. My start date is here, because that's their date of hire. The end date is this date right here the 6-2-2009, and I click OK. Bottom right corner, well, I have to make this an absolute reference or it's going to shift and it will become a relative reference. So I made this date over here, H3, an absolute reference. So please be sure you do that up here in your formula bar. Go to the bottom right corner, left click, drag it, and drop it. All right, months employed. This is a pretty simple math math problem. So if it's 1,914 days or 1,900 days, how many months is that? The average month has about 30 days. I know some months have 31. We're just going to go with 30. So this is the easy one. Equals D5 divided by 30. And it spits out a number of months. Go to the bottom right corner and I'm going to drag it and drop it. Now, if you notice, I didn't have to put an absolute reference because I do want this to be a relative reference over here, and it's always going to put in the number that I put. Okay, so for departments, I want this to be a data validation. I don't want to have to type all this stuff in. This will just not be very much fun at all. It would not be pleasant, and, you know, minimal typing is great. So... If you're on the home ribbon, you're going to click on data, then you're going to click on data validation. 
Then three things pop up. You have data validation circle, circle invalid data, and clear validation circles. You're going to choose data validation. Allow. You have three things here. You have settings, input message, and error alert. We're going to click on settings. Where it says allow, you're going to click this drop down arrow and you're going to choose list because we only want people to choose from what we provide. Okay, for source, you click here. Your source for departments is right here. It is cell B34 all the way down to B46. And you see it did the absolute reference for you, which is pretty awesome. So you're going to click OK. Now you have your list, which is pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to do that for the rest of them. So I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to click Data Validation. We'll walk you through it again. Click Data Validation again. We're going to change it from any value to list. And then the source, again, is over here, B34 to B46. We click OK. And in any of these, you see you click, it's going to come up with a list. All right, so we're just going to choose some random things. Okay, so the first one, we're going to say Glenn Barefoot works in boys wear. Adrian works in jewelry. And boys. Men's. Brenda works in menswear. Alan works in appliances. Dina works in accessories. Uh, Laura, we're going to put her in cosmetics. Lois, we're going to put her in infants. Shoes for Doris. Bill, we're going to put him in kids' wear. Uh, Claudia is going to go over to housewares. Max, headroom. That sounds so technology driven. So we're going to put him in technology. Leonard in women's wear. Which could be a good thing. I mean, he could really compliment some ladies and sell some stuff. Housewares for Anne. For Stedman, we're going to put him in appliances. Mike is going to go over to accessories. Okay, so Ben, we're going to put him in cosmetics. Um, we'll also put Lacey in cosmetics. And then we've got jewelry. Boys wear, children's, oh furniture, we don't have anybody in furniture yet do we? Nope. Let's go with furniture. We'll put Ross in infants, Ted, we'll stick him over in kids, and furniture. Because believe it or not, kids area is really a busy area. Okay, so now we're going to look up the commission. This is going to be a lookup function. All right, so equals lookup. And what is it we want to look up? Their commission down here is based on how many months they're employed. So we want it to look up the months employed. And where do we want to look it up at? We want to look it up here in this table. Now, before we put parentheses, let's make this an absolute reference, meaning it will always go back to this table and press enter. Now, if you notice, it's 20%, 63 months. Well, it's not 72. It's in between, so it pulls back 20. So we're going to go to the bottom right corner, click, and drag it. Right here, we're going to type in bonus in cell I4. Now we're going to click here. So go back and click on I4. 
And up here in your toolbar, you're going to click uh, More Borders. It'll come up today. So we want the double border on the top like this and double border on the bottom. So under Style, we're going to click the double line. And then we're going to click the top and the bottom. We're going to click OK. All right, so the bonus is their sales times their commission, right? So equals commission times sales. And then we're going to go to the bottom right corner, click it, and drag it. Now this one has a number sign, and it has a number sign. He sold $135,000. That's pretty awesome. So we're going to go to the top of the column between I and J and double click. And if you look right here at, uh, who is this? Ann. She has nothing here, and she has nothing because she's only been employed for 23 months, which is less than 24, so she gets no commission. And the same thing with Ross, as well as Dino. So it's super duper easy assignment. Um, we will do an auto sum here of all the bonuses. So all the bonuses paid out for these employees at Markey's were $88,000. That would be the bonus, and I'm going to make that bold. So then all you need to do is save this to your Google Drive and upload it to Course Sites for Grading. It's super duper easy. I hope this guided you through the assignment. If you have any questions, give me a shout, and I'll gladly help you out.